Hi, this is the Film Crop Channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a 2004 action movie called New Police Story. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Chief Inspector Chan Kwok Wing, getting drunk in a bar, tries to get home, barely standing on his feet and one of the doorways falls to the ground. Chan is passed out. A young man approaches him and looks at his documents. Police Inspector Certificate. A year earlier, a criminal took a guy and a girl hostage. He shoots at the guy and invites the press. He calls a certain Eric Chan, because of whom he lost all his money. The reporter who filmed it turned out to be Chan. He disarms the criminal and snatches the grenade from his hands, but the man pulls the pin at the last moment. But Chan is not lost and throws a grenade into the sewer, saving everyone from the explosion. A man approaches him and thanks him for his help, he turns out to be the same Eric, because of whom everything happened. Chan hits him so hard that he falls. After the incident, Inspector Chan scolds his colleagues for their poor training, despite the fact that he taught them how to masterfully handle weapons. On one of the skyscrapers sits a gang of young guys who wear strange and creepy masks. They tie themselves to a skyscraper and go down to the right floor. Taking their weapons out of the bag, they go straight to the safe. A man who worked in a bank opens a safe for them, they shout that they are rich. And one of the bandits asks to call the cops. They seem determined to play with the cops. The bandit takes the clerk hostage and stands right in the middle of the road, where police cars are coming. Costumed bandits shoot all people without hesitation, killing and seriously injuring most. After a short time, they begin to retreat. The girl who is carrying a bag of money accidentally drops it. Police officer Sam catches her and tries to arrest her, but the remaining gang members shoot at him from around the corner and the girl manages to escape. When the gang comes to their shelter, they recalculate the points that are awarded to everyone depending on who he shot. They do it not so much for money as for pleasure. Inspector Chan says on TV that in three hours the criminals will be caught. What they did was a challenge for the police, and they accept it. Chan and his team follow the gang's tracks until they finally stumble upon them. They play with them, fooling around and tossing dummies. An image is broadcast on television that the game has started. They cut off the connection to the guys who are on different floors and kill one by one. Bandits destroy policemen in every possible way, constantly throwing dummies, driving policemen into traps and chasing them through mazes. Chan is left alone and sees his bloodied colleagues hanging from ropes. The inspector starts crying until all the bandits show themselves. They call themselves cop haters and offer Jackie a game on which their lives will depend. They need to collect the gun at speed, but Jackie does not have time and two of his colleagues are thrown down. Another thug says he will beat him with his fists and Chan agrees. The stakes are still the same. But due to the fact that he stumbles over the body of his colleague, he loses, and two more are thrown down. The bandits mock the inspector and ask him to kneel. The lives of his comrades, of course, are more important, and he kneels before the bandits, begging them to stop this madness. He is offered to fight again. He agrees and sets a condition that this time the four remaining lives of his colleagues are at stake. A difficult fight begins, in which Chan manages to win, but he is three seconds late, which equals three people and they are thrown down. Only one person remains, but they do not leave him alive, setting fire to the rope on which he was hanging. Chan tries to save the young guy, but he also dies in front of his eyes. The bandits escape by activating explosives in the room, but the inspector manages to take out the bodies of his friends. It was the strongest trauma for him, to see all your friends die, with whom you worked from the very beginning. He gets depressed, he drinks alcohol day after day and does not make contact with people. After a night at the bar, we come to where the movie began. The inspector is lying on the ground in a doorway, and a young man approaches him. He asks the man not to despair and not to stir up the past. Chan wakes up at home and sees the same young man who is cleaning his house. Now he's his new partner, and Inspector Chan's annual leave has been cancelled. Bandits continue to wield and mock people, so the police offer to lead this case and catch the villains. But Chan can't hear about the bandits and drives the young man away. At night, he goes to the bar again, but Frank calls him and calls Chan's lover to the house. Frank makes it look like Chan is giving his girlfriend a birthday cake that he always forgets about. Chan looks broken, it's hard for him to see Ho Yi, and he goes to the bar, where Frank is already waiting for him. On the way out of the bar, they meet the same criminals who beat Chan. Frank masterfully deals with them and Chan finally gets back into business, helping the young man catch the fleeing thief. Chan falls asleep at the police station and when he wakes up, he is faced with a misunderstanding. They don't want to let him near this case, but Frank insists that they need Chan, and they take him back. But remembering the past, he doubts again and decides to give it up, then Frank reveals his cards, 
He is Kuang's younger brother. We are shown the childhood of Joe Kwan, who was beaten by his father all his life for sitting on the internet. After another bullying of his father, he hears on TV about how the police take care of people. But who cares about him? Why is this happening to him? He does not find an adequate solution and believes that the police are to blame for all the troubles. So he becomes the leader of the most dangerous gang of bandits, enjoying violence. Chan and Frank begin their investigation, trying to get to Sam Wong, who may have been in cahoots with the bandits. They come to the bar for answers, where they are clearly not welcome. A major brawl begins, which Sam stops. The man, like Chan himself, is bent over from the realization of the past, which he tries to forget with all his might. Sam is very afraid, but helps Chan and gives the watch to the girl he encountered in the transition during the robbery. Chan and Frank find out about the next meeting of the guys from the video game that the bandits created. They gathered on the roof where the skaters spend their time and invited Sam there, who had to find the criminals. But the bandits do not let him say a word, and shoot Sam on the spot. Before he dies, he confesses that it was he who turned them in then. Chan and Frank start chasing the two criminals. The girl manages to escape, but the guy falls off his bike and ends up right under Chan's nose, he shoots at the nearest bus and kills the driver. Our hero has to switch from catching a criminal to rescuing bus passengers. He jumps from the bridge onto the roof of the bus and somehow gets inside and saves people from death, thanks to Frank, who drove a big car to stop the bus. At the hospital, Chan is reprimanded that 60 complaints have been received against him. As a result of the conversation, it turns out that no one has ever waited for Chan in the ranks of the police. So Frank made it up, but why? His whole story with the policeman was an invention, in order to catch these criminals. Joe stops the torment of his beloved and shoots the girl. Frank and Chan are collecting information about criminals. They lured Ho Yi out of the house under the pretext that Chan was in trouble. The girl was given a bomb in which metal balls roll and if at least one falls into the hole, the bomb will explode. Chan runs to the station and tries to help with the neutralization. He does not know which wire needs to be diffused, because the device is very complicated. While they are sitting in that room, Ho Yi asks Chan if he loves her and asks him not to blame himself for her brother's death. They confess their love to each other and cry. While Chan goes to get another method of neutralization, she cuts the wires on her own, and it miraculously works. But when they try to get up, they see a very thin wire, which they tore, and the timer began to instantly go to zero. An explosion thunders in the police station, blowing everything around. Ho Yi is taken to the hospital with a serious injury, and Chan is put in jail. Bandits come right to his cell and report their new plan for a robbery. Chan can't bear to hear about it. He and Frank are helped out of the cell, despite the fact that it is illegal, but everyone at the station supports them, instead of sending them back to the cage. They have to catch the criminals. The guys from the computer club say that in their game they show future targets for attack. This time, the target is the Central Bank of Hong Kong. Chan and the police act very cunningly, they invite the parents of the bandits into the building itself. This scares the guys a lot, and some of them start running away. One of them is shot by Joe, right in front of his parents. Shooting begins, Chan tries to go upstairs to Joe, but drops the gun on the way. However, even being unarmed, he manages to chase criminals. And here he is again fighting with the same bandit with whom he fought that tragic day. Their forces are almost equal, despite the young age of the criminal, but Chan still begins to win and then the guy grabs the improvised items, but this does not help him any place. At this time, Joe runs up to them and starts shooting at everyone, killing his friend. Frank tries to help Chan, but Joe is just a crazy guy who wants blood. The police arrive and do not understand who is in front of them. Chan explains that it is him and asks to call an ambulance. The police don't believe him, and the guy with the bullet in his stomach wants to shoot Chan. But when Chan says that it doesn't matter who is injured, the main thing is that he needs help. The police immediately recognize him as an inspector, and the young man lowers the gun. Joe takes Frank hostage and ties him to the roof of the house. His game conditions are still the same, you need to collect a gun for speed and Chan wins this game. Joe stands surrounded by policemen. His father comes and asks his son to surrender. Joe, taking advantage of the fact that he is at gunpoint, points an unloaded pistol at Chan. A moment later, he is shot by snipers. But the rope under his foot is not gone anywhere and Frank begins to fall down. Chan barely saves him, literally hanging on by a thread from death while the police substitute a rescue trampoline. Chan gets the position of police inspector again. He proposes to Ho Yi. But something remains undisclosed, Frank's identity, who was he? When he was little, he and his father were standing on the street, Frank was very hungry and his father went to the store to steal food. 
But at the exit he is caught by the police and hit by a car. Chan appears and asks to call an ambulance for the man, covering his body with a jacket. Later, he tells little Frank that life is full of injustice, but you always have to fight. That's why Frank became what he became. Once Chan helped him, but now Frank saved him from depression and drunkenness, returning both his beloved job and his beloved girlfriend. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video, this will help the channel to develop. Bye.